from all around your lawn. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. Good morning and welcome back to the GDFL Netball Show. Uh, we have joining as our special guest today, Jason Woolley from the Winchelsea Netball Club. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me on board. Not a problem. And I guess a few questions that we've got to ask you after um, the last few weeks we have been chatting about you and what's been happening out at Winch. Oh, cool. Far away. <laughs> um, I, I guess, you know, you guys are sitting top of the ladder. Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago you, you did play um, Bell Post Hill and brought in some players who we hadn't heard of before okay. and um, the weeks before that I think you had a couple of GFL players who we hadn't heard of before. Yeah. What's been going on out there? A um, few things, like I guess firstly all of those players that played against Bell Post had actually played for Winch before. Okay. Um, so there was no one new there. They'd, most of them had played against Bell Post, I think. So there was nothing too exciting when? about that. Uh, 2011. So, so last year. Last year. So they played against them then. Um, unfortunately, we've had some changes with Amy working and also Nat Tomasini's work arrangements. So okay. it's just meant that they've missed. Oh, they were some of my questions. <laughs> They're yeah. on my list. Jeez, you uh, just fortunately, we can't yeah. let the truth get in the way of a good yeah. story. Okay, it's that's nice and right. simple. So, you've been reading your notes, Fiona. Uh, uh, I mean, Amanda. Um, sorry. Amy's taken a position as a nanny. So instead oh. of working at a childcare centre with set hours, she's yep. relying a little bit on um, the family and when she's available. Yep. Um, and same with some weekend and evening work for Nat Tomasini as well. So that's mm -hmm. just meant that defensively, plus a couple of injuries have hurt us down there, so we've had to mm -hmm. rotate a little bit. Yep. Um, you asked about some GFL players, and yep. that was um, the Friday night game. Yep. So obviously Friday night's not the norm for us. I think our game was, might have been six or seven, which meant even though those players were available, they couldn't get there in time. Yep. Um, and the stars just aligned. Those girls had, uh, are good friends with some of our girls, so it just opened up an opportunity. But didn't want to utilise B grade, under 17s and yep. everything? So we've got with our B grade players, a few of those have played up yep. a couple of them are almost locked so yep. we do have to be very mindful as you know there's yep. a, a quarter count there um, one of our other b-grade defenders shares um, her preference is to not play up mm -hmm. so you know you're in that kind of situation where some people don't play to play a grade mm -hmm. um, they play to get the best out of themselves and shares was someone who played d grade the year before mm -hmm. so to step up to b grade yep. is, is her sort of norm and instead we played some under 17s i think two or three under 17s played in that game as well through the mid-court and attack in so okay. you know that we're getting a pretty good balance with the players coming through yep so finals wise i i guess you know the the big questions are you brought them in um for probably the biggest game of of the year for you guys against bell post hill you only play them once you okay. will meet them again obviously in finals at at some stage we would say What's going to be happening in finals? Are Amy Worth and Nat Tomasini going to be making it qualifying for yeah, finals? Um, absolutely. They're, they'd already be qualified. Um, yep. Amy and Nat. So that's fine. That's back in. Um, it also means that our best centre court player in Renee gets freed up back to the mid court. So mm -hmm. um, that actually will hopefully make us stronger. I mean, no offence to, to Kate, etc., that played. And obviously, we pushed Renee back for that game. But mm -hmm. um, She played we, a beautiful game in Yeah, she did. Yep. I, and you forget that, you know, Renee's made team of the year playing both goal defence mm -hmm. and mid court. So, mm -hmm. you know, to have someone with that kind of flexibility in your team is, is quite awesome for us um, and has helped us fill that gap with. Uh, Amy and Nat missing a few. Uh, hopefully they'll be back in the next few weeks, so yep. that will strengthen us a little bit. Yep, and Kath Knott yeah, has I think made a few appearances. She has. Three last, games. Yeah, <laughs> last time I was on the show, again, no exciting story here, but um, Kath was playing in another league. She wanted to play somewhere yep. close to home and put back into her community. Yep. We Hey, we did discuss that with you back in the Yeah, week, and um, unfortunately one. what's happened there is she was at a club where defensively a couple of their players they had some player issues went through their committee I, i'm not really into netball gossip but what sort of happened was their their club sacked the coach um and the players all walked so kath was left without a team so in that situation Bell Post we're talking about oh no it happens <laughs> <laughs> Staying clear of that one. Um, but pretty much what had happened there was that left her without a team yep. you know again she'd in really enjoyed playing with winch in the past she loved the club mm -hmm. and let's be honest her sister's there so that's yep. the perfect scenario for her to come back in yep. um and now she's a, a winchelsea player so you know so we're mindful of the the game she's got to get to to qualify for finals so it's four games for here on in yeah, I think she's got four or five left. Um, but there's only six games left, isn't there? How yeah, many games she has seven? to play something, something four like six or four of the next six or something yeah. like that. So, so that's it, And there's a few other players that have to do that too, isn't there? Oh, like, not from our I think there, there are a couple throughout the league. Yeah, yeah. so Sun and one throughout the league. Yes. Yeah. And um, who was the other one uh, spoke about? The other one now would be Casey Pulis. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I mean, look, that's... So she's definitely back. Yeah, she's back. 
that. So I've got some questions, Jason. I'm a little <laughs> bit of paper here. Oh, yeah, and oh, you've, yeah. you've already answered uh, quite a few of them. So um, you've, you've been able to get 23 different players. I've been doing a little bit of research with my um, match day paperwork that's been coming through for the media. Cool. So 23 different players have played A grade for um, Winchelsea this yep. year. So some people might say you're very lucky to well, be able to get players of that quality to come through I think that side. You've probably got to look at who some of those players mm -hmm. are. I mean, as I said, we. Um, made a commitment at the start of the year to give some development to some of the younger players. So if you go through that list, you'll probably find a high percentage of those were actually B-grade players that have played up or under 17. So yeah, there's a couple that we spoke about before that we've been able to bring in players, but it's also been an opportunity to you know get some under 17s and things like that in as well. So who are the junior players? I know Meg Royal's a junior player. Yeah, who are Meg the other Alicia junior players? Alicia Hill okay, as well. Yep. Um, Katrina Felice is the other one. And I don't think she's played up as much this year, but we'd sort of made a commitment with her She's 14, barely 15, so we're looking to mm -hmm. bring her through B grade. Um, if anyone's seen Kat, no I offense, gave, Kat, I, if gave her, I gave her a big rap last yeah, week. Yeah, she is. She's a great goaler. She's uh, mm. a bit of a stick. So we want to get, you know, and she's still learning the goal shooter position, particularly against the bigger bodies. As yep. you know, it's, it's quite a different game. So she played some A grade games for us last year, and this year we've made a big commitment to get her together. Um, through B grade with the A grade, of, uh, plan of pushing her through A grade next year. Yep, so that's three. That's all right. Um, and then we've got... Out of how many? Like, 23. 23. Well, do you want to go through the list? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've got Just Ra uh, Rada, who's a B-grade player yep. as well, coming yep. up. Cheryl Lee, who we spoke about before. Um, in that, you'd have Ange and Bron. So there's yep. a big chunk. Eliza Matheson. Yep. So that's... You know, that's good for the club. Yeah. So given that you've had 23 different players, so how do you implement your, your systems, your game, your game play when you're rotating so many through? And not so much from the juniors and the locals that we're speaking about yep. bringing through, but the players that you're bringing down. I do know that you coach a lot of the girls. Do you coach a lot uh, of the girls or not midweek? Yes and no, a lot yep. I do. So some of those we use different, uh, the same sort of strategies following yep. through. So I have yep. a particular, like any coach, you have yep. a particular style which you like to use. So mm -hmm. to be able to bring in players that we know helps yep. um, obviously throughout the club as I've said before we train 17 B and A all together so again that's an opportunity to make sure that we have the same structures going through so that all the girls can play that so our 17s play the same as our B grade play the same as our A grade some of the other players that come in have played within that structure before so it does take some learning and and the players are, are generally smart enough to be able to work together um, so that just helps you know if there's only one or two that you've got to bring up to speed on our structure that's okay yeah. See, uh, you may not listen to all this and that's good and well and everything. My question to you, Jason, is how long do you plan to stay at Winchelsea and are these girls going to stay with you? Or, are, are, you know, when you walk away to go, you know, broader horizons, those girls will probably leave. So where does that leave Winchelsea as a club in whole? Uh, probably a couple of things to that question. I mean, how long am I going to go for? I walked in on a one-year contract. That's mm -hmm. turned to two, it's turned to five. Mm -hmm. So you're there um, for the next three years, yeah, at Winch for the next three uh, years? Who knows? Um, I say that after every year and within every season, win, lose or draw. I mean, I went for one, turned into two. Yeah, let's go for three, let's go for four. Now we're at five. Could it become six, seven, eight? I, I couldn't answer you at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and I can't speak on behalf of the girls. I mean, we've had changes in LV East over time anyway. So as someone comes in, someone goes out. Mm -hmm. Who knows who's going to be at any club in the future. In terms of the development, you know, we've, as I've said a few times here already, under 17, B grade, A grade, they're all doing the same same system. So you don't lose those systems. All those people aren't going to leave the club in, in one hit. So hypothetically, if I did leave next year, there's hopefully good structure that's already in place so that the next people coming through or anyone within the club can actually continue to take that and run it forward. Yeah. And I guess something that's sort of come up when, you know, I've been around to other games and things are people talking about wanting a rule implemented about um, not bringing in GFL players. Not, and you're not the only club that's oh, done no, it this absolutely year. Not. Um, no. You know, but I, I guess it, it appeared without talking to you guys and that coming into a big game against Bell Post Hill that you were short there, so I will bring in some... No, I think, um, and I don't know if you guys have looked at the teams, but we didn't bring anyone from either a VNL club or from the GFL for the uh, Bell Post game. That was purely winch, and the people that came in actually don't even play state league. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, again, I think we'll be a bit stronger once we have 
uh, Amy and, and Tomo into yeah. that. So Absolutely. hopefully that clears that up. Well. And just another question, um, Jacinda Todd, great to see her back on the weekend. Yep. I think she's a beautiful, beautiful wing attacker. She Drive is. onto the ring. A lot of all juniors out there should watch her play because yep. she's she's definitely a good role model to people. You know, young kids yep. trying to come up play wing attack. Has her situation changed with her commitments during the year yeah, and her availability as well? She is now also becoming available for us as well. Yep. Um, and her time's freed up so that she's actually taking some specialist stuff at training. So our mid-quarters, particularly our young ones, um, are going to get the benefit of, of her running some sessions yep. for them. So that's great for us. Yep. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming and joining us. Um, a few questions that we had. Yeah, I guess we could clarify one at a time. Yeah. Good story. You know, good luck with the rest of the season, but we, we will be thanks. seeing you in the finals anyway. Excellent. Thanks for having me on board. And we'll be back after the break. We got the readers from all around your lawn. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. Yeah.